Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Quarantine with Rosh. Today's guest is Tom Abel, and actually I see he has joined, so let's just get started before I waste any time. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. Yourself? I'm doing pretty well. I mean, by now I'm just trying to like find things to do at this point because I'm not sure in America how long this is going to last. But how are the conditions in England? Yeah, uh, probably pretty similar, I think. So we've we've um, been sort of locked down for probably the past month now. Uh, I think there's an update on Sunday, so we'll see. But to be honest, I don't think anything will happen for a while. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's not been great, but what's about, what about the situation over there? So, I mean, like I was going to ask, are you guys, what are you guys allowed to do? Like, are you allowed to just go grocery shopping or things open here? I went out yesterday just for like a bit and I realized there's so many cars that we were driving past like some ice cream places and people were like standing in line to get ice cream. And I was just like, clearly we're not taking it seriously, even though America has the most cases. So it's, yeah, I, I think it's, it's what... really bad here. <laughs> Great here. I, I think the UK is second, so not doing very well either. But yeah. you're allowed, you're allowed to sort of go out shopping and stuff. But okay. when you wait in the queues, you've got to be like two meters apart from everyone. Yeah. Um, and you're allowed to sort of go out once a day for exercise. Um, okay. but that's about it, to be honest. But I mean, it's worse. Like I don't live in a city, but in yeah. cities, it's not great. So like you know, you see things in London. You know, people mm-hmm. are sort of going out and getting together and mm-hmm. just not really listening to yeah. what we've been told to do so yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't really I help much. that's yeah exactly that's been happening I think everywhere which yeah it doesn't really help anyone but how have you been able to occupy your time yeah so I've found it okay to be honest um it's quite nice to sort of relax and switch off because uh, mm-hmm. obviously uh, the cricket sort of life can be quite intense you know you're playing mm-hmm. a lot you're training a lot um but I live with my little brother, so sort of we keep keep each other going, I guess. Uh, and yeah, sort of doing bits and pieces of like fitness stuff. And uh, I've bought a ukulele. I'm trying to sort of learn to play that. So oh, wow. it just gives me something. Gives me something to do. Um, but yeah, yeah, plenty of these things like that. So. Yeah, definitely. So how have you been able to kind of keep up with your training? Obviously, you can't really do your usual training, but how have you still been able to kind of maintain? some fitness to go on yeah so from a cricket point of view um obviously quite restricted in what we're able to do um and everyone's got different facilities available to them but yeah the last month or so it's been um just sort of running on your own and things which gets quite boring and I don't really enjoy that to be honest but um and it's just sort of doing um whatever you can do really I don't have a garden uh so I tend to do like a bit of yoga in my flat and stuff. Okay. Um, but if, obviously if you, people with gardens, you know, you can do bits and pieces in there. But yeah, just got to try and make do at the moment. Yeah, It's definitely. obviously not ideal, but you know, there's bigger things to be worrying about than sort of trying to keep fit for the cricket season. Yeah, 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 no, definitely. Now, if you had to be quarantined with any cricketer, who would it be? It's an interesting question. I'd probably say Virat Kohli I mean he's obvious obvious choice um but I just think he's you know plays a different game to anyone else he's Mm -hmm. he's better than anyone else and um I'd love to pick his brains obviously as um as a batter I think you know you can learn so much from from him uh the way he sort of you know I don't know him obviously but the perception about how he goes about his training and Mm -hmm. Um, he's obviously very competitive and yeah, just the things he does as a batsman are like crazy. So Yeah, no, I'm a huge fan, so I can understand. I'm not sure his wife Anushka would really enjoy if he was quarantined with someone else, but yeah, I would I yeah, would I'm sure. love that as well. So let's move on to your childhood. So when exactly did you start playing cricket? So I started, I reckon, when I was probably about seven. Um, 
So that would have been about 2001. Um, I mean, I played with my when I was a kid, just in the garden and yeah. on the beach. But I reckon, yeah, I started playing at school and at my club when I was seven years old. So okay. it's, yeah, it's gone pretty quickly the last, what, yeah. <laughs> 18, 20 years. Exactly, yeah. And then who was your childhood cricket hero? Who was someone you looked up to a lot? So I, yeah, so I'm from Taunton um, in Somerset. So when I was growing up, I used to, you know, try and get down to the to the Somerset ground after um, after school and things like that. So I, you know, I used to watch Somerset players growing up and, you know, watching the likes of Marcus Dreskothic, uh I guess he was a big role model for me um, mm-hmm. as, a, as a Taunton boy. Um, but yeah, I used to enjoy watching Lara bat. He was quite flair and as a yeah. batter, he was, he was good to watch. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And then speaking of, you know, going after school, did you ever bunk school at all to go and watch matches? Uh, I would have loved to, but I, I never <laughs> did because, yeah, God, my mum and dad would have gone. Actually, yeah, I, mean, I didn't, unfortunately. So, pretty good student, I guess. <laughs> Well, yeah, I just didn't want to incur the wrath of my dad, so I thought I'd better, you know, do my studies, and then hopefully after that, it'll take me down to the cricket. Yeah, definitely. What was your favourite subject and least favourite subject in school? Uh, I guess, you know, it's just, obviously I love sport, um, so PE naturally was probably my favourite subject, but I also really enjoyed maths, cause, which is mm-hmm. probably, yeah, not everyone's cup of tea, but... yeah. I just saw it as, you know, like puzzles and problem solving and quite enjoyed that really. It wasn't as, I didn't find it as uh, tough as, I wasn't great at math, but I didn't, Yeah. I preferred it to some other subjects. And my worst was without a doubt physics. It was just too hard, too complicated. So not for me. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I hated physics too. It was cool, but I just like couldn't wrap my head around it. A lot of the cricketers um, had mentioned that math is their least favorite, but then again, a lot of them mentioned how like they do a lot of mental math while they're playing as well to figure out yeah. like run rates and things like that. So yeah, it's definitely a good thing to have. So my next question is, what was it like growing up in Taunton? So I actually like spent a whole week there. I honestly loved it. It's a very small town, but then again, like after yeah. five or six, it gets very dead um, in terms of, you know, if you want to do things or anything like that. So what was it kind of like growing up and did you ever have to travel to other towns, other counties to kind of get more experience or anything like that? Yeah, it's a good question. And like the first thing I would say is, yeah, it's probably Taunton's quite small and quite quiet. It's probably not everyone's a cup of tea um but as I say I grew up here and you know it's my home and I, I had a incredible sort of upbringing um yeah. went to school just down the road um you know and just played r- loads of sports um all day every day really uh and my family is, is still in Taunton so that's quite nice um so yeah I think for me I sort of don't know anything different um, I know some people or some cricketers obviously uh, like they come to Taunton and they can find it quite a challenge because it is quite a small quiet quiet town but mm-hmm. um, yeah I guess everyone enjoys sort of home comforts don't they and yeah. being close to home so. So do you prefer like small town settings compared to anything else? Yeah it's hard to say because I've never had an experience really yeah. of uh, living in a city but I, I yeah. like the countryside um yeah I, I mean as I said earlier things can get quite hectic so sometimes it's quite nice to you know have a bit of peace and quiet and yeah um, yeah, yeah I think I just get the get a nice sort of balance of it here okay now let's talk about your school days so you know you played a lot of sports we'll start off with cricket so like at the age of 16 you know, crossing that thousand runs mark for your school and being the youngest cricketer to do that. So kind of what was in your mind? I mean, like, um, how were you able to kind of get yourself going and just, you know, progress so much in cricket and school? Yeah, I think it's an interesting one. Because at the time, I probably never really sort of um, appreciated what sort of yeah. I was doing. And I think you take it sort of one game at a time. And I remember especially in my last couple of years at school, I sort of really wanted to lead from the front in terms of like my performance and try and help the team win ultimately. And 
I remember I played sort of four years in the first team at school and I remember sort of being a 15 year old pretty quiet shy not very confident sort of batter and mm-hmm. um, sort of some of my team older teammates really sort of helped me through and helped me to develop and I think I really profited from that in my last couple of years at school and yeah I sort of um, my final year especially at school was like an incredible time for me and to sort of go out on a high um, with a pretty successful season was yeah it was amazing to finish like that. Yeah and in that 2012 year you know you scored seven centuries and like all your innings were 50 plus runs so kind of what was going on in like you mentally where it was just like you know you were just able to tackle on kind of the opposition and were able to mentally just stay so fit like that. Yeah, again, I sort of can't really put my finger exactly on on why I wish it happened more often, to be honest. (laughs) um, Yeah, it's, you know, you you form, it goes sort of up and down, whereas that year it sort of, um, I was sort of, was quite consistent. So, yeah, Yeah. just, it was great, obviously, but it's disappointing when I I don't quite score as many runs now. (laughs) I'm sure you will soon, though, as soon as we get back on the field. (laughs) Fingers crossed, but fingers crossed. In 2013, you know, you also got the award from Wisden. So kind of, was that something that also just helped you motivate? And we'll go back into the other sports you play, but was that something that helped you kind of figure out that cricket is something that you want to kind of go towards in the future? Yeah, I mean, it all happened very quickly, but I mean, those sorts of awards were never really a motivator for me. And okay. I would have would have had no idea um that I would have been up for an award like that and it wasn't probably until I sort of heard this the the previous winners of that award that you know started to resonate with me actually um well firstly I wouldn't put myself in the same bracket as the likes of Butler and um and and those sorts of players but obviously you know it's a pretty prestigious award to win Mm -hmm. um but at the time yeah I remember just sort of obviously I was playing playing a sport that I love with my best mates at school and you yeah. know you're just going out at weekends trying to win the games and yeah obviously those sorts of accolades come later down the line and yeah, um, yeah they're obviously very proud to sort of have won it but yeah I wouldn't say it was a motive a motivator okay. for me at all no yeah definitely now you played a lot of sports how are you able to manage you know being a part of the cricket team hockey team rugby team and even like leading those teams as well. So how are you so sports focused? And then how did you kind of go on to really choose cricket to be your sport? Yeah, I mean, I was a bit of a sports nut and still am, to be fair. And I feel sorry for my mum a little bit because she obviously had to put up with when I was a kid, obviously just playing all these sports every day. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I just, I love them all. And I think you can get sort of different skills from playing different sports and yeah. Um, yeah, playing rugby probably toughened me up a little bit and playing hockey, it's obviously a lot of hand-eye and, you know, you can get quite fit playing hockey and cricket. It was, I always loved cricket. Um, I pro- I, when I was younger, I wouldn't say it was my strongest sport. I would um, say hockey was probably my strongest suit. But mm-hmm. as I sort of grew and matured a little bit when I was uh, 16, 17, um, things started to turn for me from a cricket point of view. Um, I started sc- scoring more runs and and um, spending a lot more time, dedicating a lot more time to my cricket, really. And that's when things started to take off. And uh, yeah, it wasn't probably till I was 17 where I started to think, you know, maybe I, I could be good enough. Maybe maybe this is could become a, a genuine career for me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Now, with cricket, what is something that you think makes cricket more difficult compared to some other sports? That's a good question. There's just so many things. And obviously, from a batting point of view, like the consistency, um, I think it's so it's difficult to be as, you know, you look at the top players and how consistent they are. It's yeah. like, it's amazing, really, because... I find as a batter you make you know the smallest mistake and your innings is over so Mm -hmm. for the guy for the top players to be as consistent as they are I think takes a huge amount of work and um, mental strength as well to sort of but equally I would say that everyone goes through tough periods in their Mm -hmm. careers Um, 
and you know the guys that sort of uh, use those periods to to get better to get stronger I think they're the guys that can really kick on um, but yeah I think obviously as you get go up the levels as well it gets very competitive and mm -hmm. you're playing against with and against people that are just as talented if not more talented than you and yeah you know I think that's when you really find out how much you want it and how much you're willing to dedicate to it yeah definitely I mean one of the reasons why I kind of fell in love with cricket because it's so complicated you know compared to other sports I feel like you know it's so much more involving mm -hmm. mentally and physically and more mentally compared to physically as other sports often it's more you know physically and everything but with cricket Definitely. I mean yeah even exactly even with top players even if they are consistent it's like they have rough patches you know sometimes they go a year where you know they aren't even selected for matches and then they come back strong so it's something that's yeah. you know like so much pressure as well yeah there's so many strands to it as you say and you know like you say it's with the different formats as well being able to adapt um, obviously five four or five day games really sort of test you physically and mentally and um, yeah there's there's so many aspects to it yeah definitely so how did you feel you know getting chosen for the Rangers for the Bangladesh Premier League yeah that was surreal to be honest I mean I would never have said 2020 was my strong suit at all um, but last year uh, sort of my white ball cricket developed quite a bit and yeah just out of nowhere really sort of got an opportunity in the Bangladesh Premier League and yeah that was my first involvement in any sort of franchise competition and that's another beauty of playing cricket obviously is you get to travel the world and experience mm -hmm. different different places different cultures different cricketing environments and yeah um yeah I was very lucky I got to enjoy that um with uh, one of my close friends Lewis Gregory as well so yeah, it was an incredible experience to be a part of. Obviously, you're playing with and against some of the best players in the world. And, mm -hmm. yeah, it was surreal. What would you say was, like, one of your best memories from that experience? So, one of my best memories was probably, I mean, as a team, we got off to a terrible start. I think we lost the first four or five games. Mm -hmm. And... um yeah, I got asked, I mean, I hadn't really played a huge amount in the competition, but I got asked to be captain. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we we hadn't started the tournament very well. And uh, I guess it was like a fresh start for us as a team. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I got asked captain and then somehow we won that game. And as I say, my close friend, Lewis Gregory, played really well and sort of got us over the line when we were struggling in that game. And yeah. Yeah, I guess me that memory of, sort of winning our first game probably really stuck out for me. Do you enjoy captaining? Because even in school days, you know, you were captain of the team. So is that something you do, you are fond of? Taking on that responsibility? Yeah, I, I do. I do love it. Um, like, it's, it's an all-consuming role. And, yeah. of course, you know, like with anything, there's, there's challenges that come with that. But uh, yeah, I, I do, I do love it, especially if you've got, you know, a good group um, that you're captaining, which I've been lucky enough to have. Mm -hmm. uh, it certainly makes a big difference. But yeah, I mean, captaincy is one of those things. You know, when it's going well, it's great, and you know, if the team's not doing very well or you're not doing very well personally, it's a pretty horrible place to be. So as long yeah. as we're doing well, I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then tell me about your experience, you know, playing with England Lions against, against Australia, you know, that taking that step on um, and being able to play like that, playing against, you know, other teams like that. Yeah, again, I mean, um, sort of feel very fortunate to have had these experiences over the last 12 months or so. And mm -hmm. that was my first ex um, involvement in any sort of England setup. Uh, so, yeah, to get the call to be involved in the England Lions was, you know, very special for me. And yeah, being part of that setup, um, yeah, it was amazing. Like a great group of, of people, get great group of players, and you know, it was a step up. There's obviously that added pressure. You're sort of representing the Lions, and mm -hmm. you're on tour in Australia, and you want to sort of put your best foot forward and give a good yeah. account of yourself. Yeah. Um, 
and you know you're working with and training with new players new coaches and you know I absolutely loved that that opportunity um I didn't score any runs out there which is frustrating but um I felt I took a lot from from the trip uh, I felt like I was playing really well but mm-hmm. yeah it just didn't quite happen for me in games um but at the start of the tour you know we sat we went out there to to win um and we managed to do that we won a lot of games mm-hmm. out there which was was awesome yeah I mean you get that experience but speaking of that frustration what is something that you've kind of you're working on to help you know make sure that you don't kind of get too frustrated where it kind of mentally challenges you as well because as we mentioned cricket is so mentally based and sometimes you can't really let the past affect you know the future you have to let the game go by and just have a fresh new start so that you don't think about any past innings while you're playing a new inning yeah that's that's one of the biggest things I'd say especially as a batsman you know it's trying to park that frustration a little bit and move on because yeah. it's so easy to to work yourself up and and get pretty down on yourself when things aren't going well but um ultimately you know when you go out to bat you want to you want a clear mind you don't want to be sort of worrying about your form or your technique or anything yeah. like that and so if you have that ability to sort of park your previous your previous failures um mm-hmm. then i think that's the best thing you can do and you know everyone's different um for some people you know when when they get out it doesn't really um impact them so much whereas yeah. for other people it can they can find that really difficult so it's about finding what um works for you and how you can best deal with it and give yourself the best chance in the next game because that's the yeah. beauty of it you know there's more often than not there's always another chance to to get a score definitely Okay. So I was saying usually when you go out onto the field to bat, what are some thoughts you usually think? Like is there anything that you do think, you know, while you're walking out there or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, before I go out to bat, I like I like to sort of listen listen to music just just to distract my mind and you know, just so I'm not overthinking it and then mm-hmm. you know, when I'm going out to bat, it's trying to have a confident persona about me. Um yeah. you know, give off an impression that you know i'm 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 excited and you know i'm confident in in the challenge that i'm about to sort of take on uh because i think as soon as the opposition you know senses a a few nerves or anything like that and they can prey on that so um yeah trying to sort of give off a sense of, of self belief and confidence i think is a big thing yeah So now let's talk about last year's World Cup final. You know, you being from England, so were you where were yeah. you watching from? Uh so uh, believe it or not, I actually didn't get to watch the whole game, but okay. um I think we were playing we had a game uh, on that day, but we okay. sort of caught the last probably five or six overs of of the so you, game. And then you get to see you got to see like the super over as well. Well, yeah, so we pro- we were in the change room watching the last five or six overs of the game and obviously then you know it couldn't have been more dramatic and then it goes to a super over and in that time we sort of um rushed in taxis back to the hotel mm-hmm. and we sort of got back to the hotel just in time for the start of the super over and okay yeah i mean it was it was just a crazy sort of atmosphere really you know you had people in hotels that probably weren't really big cricket fans that were just glued glued to the big screens yeah, and yeah um obviously absolutely hooked because it was just one of the most tense tense finales you could ever mm-hmm. wish to to witness i mean so how special did you think like i was actually in london then too and after the game i was literally looking for a celebration to happen i did not find anything though like i think people were watching but it wasn't like you know as big as of a celebration that i would have imagined but kind of how was it for you guys were you guys very you know happy for england to have finally won the world cup even though they were the ones who kind of you know formed cricket created cricket yeah i get i mean obviously as an england fan it was it was amazing to sort of to see them win and in that fashion it was you yeah. know it was it was incredible um i think the pressure and the expectation on the england side was huge so for them mm-hmm. to sort of deliver in those circumstances was was brilliant at the same time obviously you, i think as a human being you know you felt for the new zealanders yeah um losing out in that fashion must have been absolutely heartbreaking but they were yeah. you know incredibly sort of um 
gracious in defeat, mm-hmm. if you like. And yeah, yeah, I think we'd had a tough day in the field, to be honest. So we weren't obviously we were ecstatic that England had won, but yeah, we sort of weren't weren't going to be celebrating because okay. yeah, as I say, we were in the middle of a game. Yeah. Um. So, what is a dream stadium that you want to play in? Yeah, another good question. I've been sort of fortunate enough to play in some amazing stadiums in Australia. We played at the MCG, which yep. probably probably would have been um, the top top couple. Uh, played at Lords as well, which is amazing. Mm. I guess if I had one opportunity, it would probably be to experience playing in India. Yeah. Um, you know, I think probably Eden Gardens in Kolkata, I think, stands out as... Yeah pretty amazing place to play yeah. to play cricket so yeah yeah I'll go with Eden Gardens okay um what is your favorite format to watch cool that's a tough tough one um I mean it's my favorite format I don't think you can beat a sort of a good a gripping test match yeah um like a good test it's got everything it's got it's got drama like I don't mm-hmm. the, like no, no other format of the game can produce I don't think yeah. um you know it's over the course of five days for it to come down to to the wire I don't think yeah you know there's many sports that can sort of deliver yeah. that sort of drama so yeah I mean I love all formats but I'd say yeah good test cricket is is the pinnacle yeah and being from England I mean last year's Ashes like that Ben Stokes innings was just you know like I yeah. remember I was like okay Australia is gonna win this and I was like okay well, I'm gonna go to eat and whatnot and then I checked my phone and I was like what just happened you know so yeah I agree yeah it's definitely a I remember really- obviously because it looked like you know the game was done and dusted and mm-hmm. um I went round to my sort of family home uh and my dad doesn't have Sky but you know as it sort of got close or England needed about 50 runs to win um, we sort of got it on my phone and, you know, the whole family were just crowded around my phone watching it. And, you know, I, I'm not sure. We seem to keep saying this, but I don't think, you know, we'll see another innings or game like that in yeah. in the foreseeable future, at least, yeah. and maybe in our lifetimes. And, yeah, it's just, it was extraordinary. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what is like your normal training and diet like? Like, are you big on kind of, you know, making sure like Brad Coley, I know is like huge on training. I mean, he's changed cricket, you know, so vastly in terms of what players need to do in terms of fitness. So how important is it for you and kind of how many precautions do you usually take? Yeah, so um, I like to think anyway that I sort of um, look after sort of my diet and my exercise regime and yeah. I guess the the way I've been brought up and the way sort of my mind works, you know, is that you get out what you put in. And so, um, yeah, I like to think, you know, I sort of try and work pretty hard and, and eat the right things to give myself uh, the best opportunity of performing. Okay. Uh, ultimately, you know, I'm very aware that um, any, like that doesn't guarantee success, but, you know, as you say, you look at the likes of how Coley trains and and as a sort of young young player, you look up to that and you, and that's sort of what you want to emulate. Yeah. Um, and I guess that mindset of sort of wanting to be the best in in every facet of the game, you know, so your fielding, your fitness, your batting, your bowling, um, your diet, whatever it is, I think it all contributes to making you the best player that you can be. So... Yeah, I try and try and eat pretty well. I try and yeah. train pretty hard. Um, but equally, I'm sort of very aware that there's a lot of other players that would be doing the same as well. Okay. And then who is your current fa- favourite batsman? Yeah, I mean, again, sort of Coley would probably be the yeah. obvious answer. But I also, the other batsman I enjoy watching is um, De Kock, Quinton De Kock, I think. Yeah. He's a bit maverick, and I think, yeah, he's um, can do amazing things as well. Yeah, definitely. I'm a big fan of his as well. So the next segment is going to be Have You Ever? So I'm going to mention, and you're going to tell me if you've ever done that. So the first one is, have you ever stalked another cricketer's Instagram? Have I ever stalked? Yeah, I probably I, I have to admit to that. Yeah, I, as I say, I... Um, 
love sort of everything about cricket so I'm probably guilty of stalking some Instagram accounts here yeah definitely <laughs> have you ever been stuck in an elevator never been stuck in an elevator no okay. not sure I want to be either yeah I have been a few times not fun I don't think I'd enjoy that <laughs> have you ever fallen asleep in a movie theater nah okay. I usually eat too many sweets so <laughs> got too much energy I can never fall asleep. Have you ever cried during a movie? Yeah, I'm uh, quite an emotional guy, so uh, some movies can really sort of get to me. Yeah, uh, I'll admit what's to one, that. What's one movie that really gets to you? Uh, Gladiator. Okay. That's probably my favourite movie, and yeah, it's sort of one that sort of, yeah, tugs on my heartstrings a little bit. I mean, it's good to have that emotional side as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. probably being a bit too honest here, but <laughs> <laughs> should have just said no. <laughs> it's good to be honest. Um, the next segment's Beyond Cricket, so to get to know you better. So what is your favorite food? Favorite food, I'd go with Italian, probably okay. pizza. Yeah. Like, I don't eat it that often, but, go oh, when I do it, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big pizza fan. I've been craving it, like, I've been craving Domino's pizza, actually, for the past month. My parents are too scared <laughs> to order it, so. Yeah. Um, what is one place you want to visit? One place I want to visit is Japan. Okay. I think it's, yeah, I mean, as I say, with incredibly lucky and well traveled as, as cricketers you know you get to experience some amazing parts of the world yeah um but yeah i'd like i'd really like to visit japan i think there's you know so much culture and it just fascinates me yeah yeah definitely so if you could use three words to describe yourself what would they be this is one question i can never answer i can never <laughs> give you three words i'd have to let let other people choose for me I'm the same way Sorry, I, I used, it's okay I used to be this I mean I am the same way like whenever I have to write school papers or even college application it's like you know describe yourself or like talk something you know try to praise yourself it's so hard so it's okay I'll let Sorry, you know yeah, I'm that. gonna have to pass on that one yeah <laughs> are you an introvert or an extrovert I'll say naturally uh probably more introverted um I think it probably def uh, depends on sort of the, the environment you're in, mm -hmm. um, you know, but I'd say naturally I'm, I'm more introverted, but yeah, there's probably in certain groups, like when I'm with my friends, I'd say, you know, I'm probably like with anyone that probably yeah. the extroverted side comes out, but yeah, yeah, I sort of quite enjoy my own space and I'd say I'm introverted. Okay. What app on your phone do you use the most? Go Instagram, I think. And then what's the most used emoji on your phone? I'm not sure if you're an emoji user, but if you are. Most used emoji, probably a laughing face. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't get many back because I'm not very funny, but um, yeah, I'd say that's <laughs> my most used okay if you were a superhero what power would you want i think i'd like i've always wanted to fly i think that would be pretty cool okay life would be a lot easier if you could fly yeah and it could help a lot in cricket as well <laughs> be nice, like the yeah. Best yeah. Okay. yeah and the last part is a rapid fire of this or that so i'll give you two choices and you got to pick which one you would whichever one you would pick so okay. the first one, Virat Kohli or Kane Williamson? I love Williamson. I think he's a great bloke, but I'd have to go with Virat Kohli. Okay. Movies or shows? Good movie. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. <laughs> Pancakes or waffles? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, waffles. Okay. That's two of my favorite things, but I'll go waffles. I know. Are you a fan of crepes? 
Yeah, oh, yeah those amazing. three are like my, I could eat them for any meal, any time. <laughs> oh, no. Um, laundry or dishes? <laughs> uh, dishes. Really? I don't I enjoy either, dishes. but dishes. <laughs> uh, London or Manchester? My brother lives in Manchester, so I'll, I'll say Manchester. Yeah, and I was due to be well. playing for Manchester in the 100 as well, so. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah Manchester for me. Definitely, yeah, I really liked Manchester. London is a bit too crowded and a bit too busy for me. Manchester was really nice. It's a cool city. Yeah. Well, that's all I had for you. So thank you so much for joining me on this Quarantine with Rosh episode. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. It was awesome. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much. And hopefully you stay safe and we get to see you play cricket soon. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I appreciate that. Definitely. Stay safe as well. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.